What's up, my devoted audience? In today's video, I am going to be showing you how to make a foam board lighter. And this is not from a kit. You're just making it from scratch, from foam board and hot glue. Um, they're about 20 to 30 centimeters in length. Um, so you can throw them in the house, no problem. Just don't throw them at your sister. Then you'll be in trouble. Um, so let's get built. I'm going to be showing you how to make this. Now this is the second glider design that I'm showing you how to build. There will be more coming out in the future. And this, as you can see, it's a flying wing. Like, I made an RC flying wing. If you haven't um, seen that video, make sure you check it out. Um, so, yeah. Let's get building. We'll use the same build techniques as we used for the other glider design. If you haven't seen that one, if you like this one, check it out. Um, but yeah, this will fly fly slower. Um, just the how you put on the nose weight and where the center of gravity is will be much more important on this one. Um, but I'll walk you through that. What you'll need. You'll need an exacto knife. If you're gonna be doing this, an ul this is Ulfa, made in Japan. It's a good one to get, but if you have anyone, just make sure it's sharp and it'll work. Pencil and a metal ruler that you can cut against. And a hot glue gun. The AdTech Pro 200 is a really good one if you're doing a lot of, like a lot of this sort of stuff, but anyone will work for this project. And foam board. I like the iron gray board because you can peel off the paper because you can peel off the paper which makes you able to do cool build techniques and make it curve it and curve it um, but it's hard to find in Canada so any foam board will work um, for this project let's get started extend your knife blade you're not actually, like, you're supposed to do it like that, but if you do it that, like that far, you can't get as of a nice angle, and you'll end up being like this. Then what happens, if you're like that, you sort of take the paper with you, if you can see it there, because, but then if you do it with it out more, you can get a nice longer cut. So, if you were cutting a hard thing, yes, I would say put it out th this much, but foam board's quite soft, so you can extend it like, three four um ticks if you have this kind of blade if not then um don't worry about it but yeah just you need a nice angle like this um because if you do it like this it's at a much higher angle to the um foam and the paper so it won't cut as nice um that's just why i extended it this long okay again like um for the main wing of your other glider if you've built that one. Just do a very rough, just out, and then um, you're going to go down again. It should be about the length of your ruler, and this one's a bit more, so yeah, like the length of your ruler or a bit more. So just go like up like this, and then just curve it down. That's very rough. It, as long as you have it this sort of size, it does not matter how you do it. Just that's just totally roughly. So yeah. now you can make you make a cut here, not all the way through the foam, just through the top layer of paper and the foam. Um, so if you haven't done that before, just practice on a scrap. Um, I'll just demonstrate it for you to see it. Just take it right roughly in the middle. You don't have to measure it or anything. Just roughly like that. And then you should be able to break it. If you're off, that doesn't matter. Um, just um, we'll make it symmetrical. Um, again, I'll show you. So you can see them through the top layer of paper and foam, but the bottom layer of paper is still intact. Um, so, now that you've done that, 
let's get to making it symmetrical. Now, when you make it symmetrical, I like using a ruler. You don't have to use a ruler. You can make it bumpy. You can you can do it every you like, um, as long as you make it roughly this shape. So right from the corner down about to here. Just this is just the rough shape. I'll show you in a second. Um, and then we'll make the bottom. So you can see here, this, it's not straight across, it's like that a bit. So it's like slicked back. So you can take it from the corner, just go up a little bit, just like that. Okay, now the whole point of flipping it over in half is so you can make it symmetrical cutting it once instead of like measuring and working everything out it's just in half so whatever you do to one side it'll do it to the other um, we're just cutting out the end of the wing now so sorry if I didn't walk you through enough um, just what I did is it was all globby I just put my ruler at the top and then I cut and then just sort of like, just sort of a little angle. It doesn't really matter as long as it slicked back enough. And then I did a bottom cut here. We'll see, it may need to be a bit more up, but I didn't do it straight across. And then the wing tips, I just cut off um, as far out as I could, but still getting a bow symmetrical. So, ta-da! Now, if you have it just a flat wing, it will just spiral down, and this is pretty close to flat. So, I'm just going to put this back a little bit more. We're just making it slick back more so it has more directional stability. That, then we'll do, oops. Now we'll do the back. Okay, ta da! Slick back. You can see I made it just a tiny bit smaller here. Doesn't really matter. Just the important part is that it's slicked back. If it's straight, it will not work. So just keep that in mind. There's only two main compo components. So this is quite sturdy because there's no tail, and the fuselage always breaks, um, and the tail always breaks, and the rudder glued onto the tail always breaks. So on this one, it's just the wing and the fuselage, and the fuselage is going to be along here, so it's reinforced by the wing. That's not going to get much damage. might crease a bit at the rudder. You can always reinforce that with a popsicle stick. I'm not going to because it adds a lot of tail weight, but you can if you're going for like sturdiness. Now we're going to work on the fuselage. Take, um, if you have any scrap piece around, you can use that. Nope. So you take your foam board and then just cut, cut out a, bit, a little chunk for yourself. Just about the length of your ruler. And, um, it doesn't need to be the length of your ruler. It can be shorter, um, just wanted to make it air on the big side. Now, you know you can make this cut straight. Just take your ruler, just cut it off. You can take your ruler, just do a nice cut along there. Now, you know this cut straight, so you can line up the back of your ruler, feel with your thumbs. Make sure it's flush with the edge, and then cut along here. Don't cut all the way to the end, only cut to maybe about here, because that's going to be your rudder. Now that you've cut to there, you can make the shape of your rudder. So I like it slicked back a bit, so just put it, you can do it however you like, you can make it bumpy, whatever you like, but just as long as it's this rough angle. Um, I'm just, you can see the angle that my ruler is on. 
Now, cut it. Should be about like that. I'm gonna make it more shaped afterwards. I just wanted to show you the rough angle. There we go. Now, I like doing the back just a bit slick back. Just like that. Da -da. So, again, just did the fuselage with the width of my ruler. Then, didn't cut all the way to the end, and I did the tail. So, we have our wing, we have our fuselage. It's time to put them together. You can mark on your wing where your fuselage should end. So, just put the rudder right up against the edge of the wing in the middle. Then, just mark it with your fingernail. Then you can cut it. It's perfectly fine if it's a bit short, and that might even be a bit better. I don't know. Um, so just roughly. And this fuselage looks quite deep, so I am going to make like um, just sort of a gradual curve. Also make the fuselage look a bit smaller. Gradual curve, just so it doesn't look like there's got chopped down right now. Ta-da. Now, we have our little wing. You can see I made it a bit smaller than this, the whole thing. It can be slightly bigger, it can be slightly smaller. It doesn't really matter as long as you do similar um, things, like similar shapes as me. So, yeah. Now, you can glue your wing together and put in your dihedral. Now, what dihedral does is it dihedral is this is an exaggeration but the wing tips like the wings are sort of like a v-shape so when it banks this wing will make more lift than this wing because this wing is actually almost vertical but this wing is horizontal so this wing will make more lift and bring it back to level same with this way this wing will make more lift bring it back to level so that's what we're going to do we're not going to do that much you can see how much i have here that's what we're aiming for. So just get your hopper ready. If you're low on a stick, make sure you have a stick right beside you. So if you're in the middle of the seam, you don't run out. And then go into your closet and then it will be dry. Um, just open this up. Put a little bead hot glue down there. And put it down like that. Wipe it off. And then, this is what we did on the double wing design too. We are holding it just a bit to get that dihedral in there. Now, after about like 10 to 15 seconds passed, it's still not dry, but it's much stiffer. So, as long as you have that rough dihedral shape, you can just gently let it sit down like that. Okay? Now we have our fuselage, and then this is pretty much dry. We can glue our fuselage to our wing. Ta da! Okay, so put a bead of glue, a little bit of glue. You don't need to use much, just a little bit of glue along here, on top of the fuselage, like that. That scared me. And then, I'm gonna line up the back. Make sure your rudder, like the crease is in the middle of your rudder, like where we folded the wing in half. Now, flip it over and line it up with the crack. Now see that's very lopsided. So just spend your time getting it straight and not lopsided. We have another design, I have another design sort of like this. It's not released yet, but it's the same idea, except instead of one wing this way, it's one wing sort of this way. It's much faster, it's much more stable, but it's not as good, like just to fly really slowly and catch it. Now, fuselage is not fully dry, but it's pretty good. We can fly it, 
and see how much nose weight we'll need. So the nose weight is going to be like the center of gravity, which is where the plane balances when it flies well. It's going to be around here. But right now, it's like way back here. So I know I'll need nose weight. Let's just fly it and see how much we'll need. Okay, I'm gonna fly it and see how much nose weight we'll need. Ta da! Needs nose weight, so let's go back into the shop. We're gonna add nose weight, so dig in the bottom of your pencil thing. See if you have a um, short old pencil or broken pencil. This is getting short. So I am going to use that for nose weight. Whoa! We have our pencil. I'm gonna put it this way around. Now, I wanna put it this way around because it's more aerodynamic, but my family wouldn't be happy with me because it could poke people. So, I'm gonna actually just cut the fuselage in just a bit. This is why you make it a bit shorter if you're doing this method of nose weight. So cut it off a bit. Now, oops, wrong way. We can shove this in there, like that. And then glue this here, like that. The reason why it's out this far is because the farther forward your nose weight is, the less of it you need because of lever, because of leverage on the plane. Gonna put some hot glue on the bottom of your pencil and the tip. Just a bit where you think it's gonna touch the fuselage. It's kind of important that this lines up just, just for looks. So just line it up with your plane. If you have a long pencil, you can just cut it down to the right length um, till it flies well, or you can just draw lots and lots and then <laughs> sharpen it. It would take um, a few months though, so just warning you. Now we're <laughs> shop put some garbage on the tip and then <laughs> it actually is garbage though so let's go back into the shop put garbage on the tip and I'll balance it out we're going to put this zip tie around the nose I mean this isn't garbage but a lot of times I put the zip tie on and put hot glue around it and put random pieces of tape on it I don't think this plane will need it because it was close how it was, but um, we'll see. Do up your zip tie. Whoops, just closed it there. Do it up right at the tip, close to the tip as possible. Maybe the big part on the bottom. And just pull it tight and cut up, cut off the zip tie with some scissors. Now let's try it. That's awesome! As you can see, this is quite slow, and I'm gonna try it a few more times um, just to see if we need to add a bit more nose weight or not. Um, it is, see it has no tail, so just the slick back wings makes it have directional stability, but this is harder to throw because if you throw it slightly off, it will just go down or up, but if you do a good throw, it will fly off. Let's try it again. Oh, sorry. Um, let's try it one more time. That's good. 
good. Um, so it's great. Uh, so you're done building your plane. You can fly it around with your family and have fun. That is amazing. Unbelievable. How does it go so straight? I know it. That's amazing. Oops. See, it's slightly no, um, it's instabil uh, instable if you throw it slightly wrong, but if you throw it right, it flies amazing like that. That's amazing. That is incredible. You can also launch it um, like this. Or you can, um, I don't know, you can think of ways you can launch it. You can hold it at the moment. Oh, you can think of ways to launch it. If you want to, you can put a little hook in it and do it with an elastic. That would be pretty cool. I find the foam board rips. You need a quite substantial um, method to do that. And in the house, you don't need it. This is the one that I demonstrated the shapes with. This is the one I just made with you. You can see this one's a bit smaller. This one has slightly more nose weight compared to the plane, like compared to the size of the plane. So this does go a bit faster. I could use a tiny bit less nose weight, but this is great too. Um, this weighs 14 grams, which is a bit lighter than my double wing because I'm pretty sure my double wing design weighs 16 grams, so this is lighter. But then the slightly bigger one that I made is 18, so this is a bit heavier than the double wing design. Um, you'll see the flying wings. They usually have wing tips, but I did a rudder instead because it's quite hard to get your wing tips parallel to this line because otherwise your plane won't fly straight, so that's important, but it would be quite hard to do it with your ruler. Um, it's doable, just harder. Um, so that's why I did the rudder. If you're really going for strength, again, you can put a popsicle stick along here and here because that's the only weak part of this plane. If you're not going for strength, it's quite light this way. And yeah, as you can see, this flies slower than my double wing design. Um, so yeah, see you next time. It's not particularly efficient, but flies great. I'm gonna try it really hard. Whoa! I didn't think it would work so well. 